Hey, ICC friends, it's your girl Xaviera, and I am here for our Friday night chat. So if this is your first time joining us, my name is Xaviera. I am the founder and CEO of Ice Cream Conversations, where we serve delicious scoops of entertainment and celebrity news. And we get together for about, oh, I'm knocking over my lip gloss. We get together for about an hour every Friday night and we talk about the top stories in entertainment and celebrity news. So I welcome you to join me, get comfortable, share tonight's chat with a friend to let them know that we are live. You are always welcome to be a part of tonight's chat by dropping your comments and just let me know your thoughts, views, and opinions. And also let me know what you want to talk about if I don't have it on the docket. So for tonight's chat, I plan to tell you why I got blocked by Ashanti. We're going to talk about Chingy, we're going to talk about Shine, talk about G-Dep, and some of the other top stories this week um, that you can also follow up and get the full scoop at icecreamcombos.com. So I see my people's already checking in. I see William in the building. I see Denise in the building. So welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so let's just jump into it because um, just first thing. I'm going to remember to stay seated because I got on news anchor attire tonight, meaning I am only dressed from the waist up. And you know, sometimes I get a little excited. I get a little wound up. I jump up out of my seat. I walk away, walk back. Can't do that tonight because y'all going to get nothing but cheeks. So I have to remain seated tonight, no matter how excited or how wound up I get. So just please remind me to stay seated tonight, okay? So I see Terry checking in. I see Bev checking in. Let me know where you're checking in from. You know, let me know what city you are checking in from. I am down here in the AT of the L. Um, we are sad. We are very sad. As you know, um, Rico Wade, an Atlanta legend, um, an incomparable music icon to the city passed away and um yeah it's taken a toll on all of us you know he was the uh founder of the dungeon family he was one third of organized noise who has been responsible for giving us countless hits from outcast and goody mob and and he's even produced for tlc like you in vogue rico wade has had his hand and some of the best music that has ever been created. So I just want to take a moment to extend my prayers and condolences to the Wade family. I also want to take a moment to extend my prayers and condolences and my sincerest sympathies to the family of Mandisa. A lot of us remember Mandisa from American Idol season five. She came and sang down. And you remember there was a little situation because Simon got disrespectful by talking about her weight. And, you know, that wasn't the first time he did it to Jennifer Hudson. Anytime a, a black queen came on there that was thicker than a snicker, Simon always had something to say. So just um, just keep her family in prayer. She was found deceased in her Nashville area home yesterday. She was just 47 years old, a woman of God, a amazing, beautiful voice that touched everyone that heard her sing, you know, so just please keep her family her community everyone who loved and cherished her in your thoughts and prayers as well okay so i see some more people checking in paulette in the building uh denise is checking in from my hometown of bridgeton new jersey we got monique checking in from hawaii tony's checking in and sherry is checking in so all right guys so let's have some fun let's go ahead and get into it so i feel like the news this week has been um how can I say? It feels like a regurgitation or tell us something we don't already know type of business. So let me just start with Shine. Now, Shine, Mr. Jamal Barrows, um, many of us remember him as part of Diddy's Bad Boy Entertainment. He was the rapper that emerged on the scene after Biggie was tragically killed. And there was a lot of buzz, like, who's this dude Diddy went and got? His voice sounds similar to, to you know, to Biggie, but not just quite Biggie. And Shine had a run. Shine had some jams out there. And then, unfortunately, there was a 1999 shooting in a Manhattan nightclub. And that's the night that Diddy went out with J-Lo. I think it was after the VMAs because I... If I recall, that was the night she wore that that epic green Versace dress that left nothing to the imagination. And then they hit the nightclub afterwards. And according to Cassie, if you roll in with Diddy as a female, more than likely you got the pum pum on your persons. And a sh unfortunately, a shooting broke out. And 
A few people were shot, including um, a black queen who was shot in the face. Now, the woman who was shot in the face has always maintained that it was not Shine who shot her in the face. She always maintained that it was Diddy who shot her in the face. But Shine was charged. He was hit with some gun charges. Diddy was, I think he was charged with like bribery and some other like rinky dink charge but it was nothing like really concrete or something that equated to the crime that had taken place uh, unfortunately shine was sentenced he was convicted he was sentenced to 10 years in prison for a crime that he has always maintained that he did not commit and then he was released eight years later i think he was um when did they lock him up? 2001. He was released eight years later in 2009 and America was like, mm, sorry, Shine, you got to go boo-boo. So they deported him back to Belize, his, his native land. The good news is when Shine got back to Belize, he completely turned his life around. He fell in love. He started a family and he is now a politician. And, um, so now he's like a diplomat and because he's a diplomat now he can come back to the u.s as a diplomat come back on u.s soil but i say all that to say after little rod filed that lawsuit against diddy one of the accusations in his lawsuit was that diddy admitted to him that he was the person responsible for shooting the gun in the, in the 1999 shooting in the manhattan nightclub which vindicate, I guess, I don't want to use the word vindicated, which I guess, I guess I'm going to use the word vindicated. If you got a better word, give it to me. But the victim who has always maintained that Diddy is the one who shot her in the face, she felt vindicated. Now, Shine, in a recent interview, he's opening up about the whole situation. And my heart truly, honestly, really, really goes out to Shine because his career was like taken off. He was like on the cusp of stardom when this whole situation went down in this nightclub. And in this recent interview, he was like, look, I have always maintained my innocence. I was, I was a young boy. I was the fall guy. And then he also noted that the victim is speaking out and the victim has also, you know, stated that he is not the one who shot her. And it's just crazy to me. And I shared this on the Facebook page, like how you could literally tell people something until you are blue in the face. Of course, there's going to be some people who hear you, but a large group or the mass majority of people are like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Either they turn a blind eye, a deaf ear, they don't pay you any mind. And it's almost like you just got to wear it on your jacket. And then one day, you know, a, a unexpected chain of events take place. And all of a sudden, everybody's ready to sit down and they want to hear your story time. Like, no, Shine, tell us more about what happened that night. Shine has been trying to tell us for years. I mean, at some point in time, he reached the point where he was like, OK, this is black history. In order for me to move forward, I'm going to have to put this behind me. But I know he probably like, F y'all, because I've been telling y'all this. But those of us who have followed this story, I mean, I was old enough to remember when it went down, watching it on MTV News. Shout out to all the people who remember MTV News. But I was old enough to watch it, like when it was kind of going down in real time, when the trial was going down and when Shine got convicted and when he got sentenced. And one thing about Diddy, when you on Bad Boy Records, remember the time Destiny's Child was performing on 106 in Park and they were doing their little walk, boom, boom, and Michelle fell and the rest of them was like, oh, well, and they just kept on walking because they got a performance to do. That's pretty much how Diddy treated all of the Bad Boy artists. If you got caught up, if you slipped and fell, if you got shot, got killed, you went to jail, whatever, Diddy just kept on stepping. As some the old people used to say, one monkey don't stop no show. I mean, we saw it with Biggie, kept on stepping. And I don't, I didn't expect the man to just, just lay down and die and stop his life. But it was just like, almost like when you walk in and you trip and then you look back to see if anybody saw you trip. It, it was almost like that. Craig Mack, Biggie, G Depp went to jail, Shine went to jail. Black Rob passed away. And when he passed away, I mean, he basically was on his own. Mark Curry was speaking out 
not Mark Curry, the comedian, but Mark Curry, who used to be on Bad Boy, you know, he was speaking out about how, you know, Black Rob was just kind of left out there. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, shine is speak, like, I, I don't know. When I wrote the story, people were like, duh, we've been knew that. We've been knew that. We've been knew Shine was innocent. But apparently Shine didn't feel like the public really believed in him because he wouldn't have spoke out about it the way that he did this week. It was almost like he just wanted to yell, finally, like finally someone is saying something. Finally, y'all believe me. Finally, y'all paying attention to me. And that kind of hurt me because Shine is just, I don't know. First of all, he went to Belize and found the Fountain of Youth because Shine looks younger now than he did when he was running around with Diddy. First things first, he has a beautiful wife, a beautiful child, and he appears now to be living a beautiful life. And he said, you know, all this stuff with the lawsuit and Diddy and all of that is just opening old wounds for him. But the way I'm set up, I don't understand how he could be cordial with Diddy or be cool with Diddy. And I was reading some of the comments and some of the reactions that you all had to this story. And some of y'all were like, well, why, how, why should he be mad at Diddy? It was the justice system that railroaded him. But was it? I mean, the justice system had a role in it. But was it all the justice system? Then there was the rumor, remember there was the rumor that Shine just took the charges in exchange for Diddy look, taking care of his family and looking out for his family because Shine was an immigrant into the U.S. So much around that. But again, I'm back in 1990, 1999 to be exact. Then fast forward five years later, I end up in Chingy land. That's when Chingy hit the scene. I like it when you do that right there. I can't even remember the dance. Oh, it wasn't it this? No, I don't know. I don't remember the dance. But anyway, so now Chingy is speaking out. And again, flashbacks because we've we've heard this already, but nothing like some fresh eyes and some clean ears to hear your story because you feel like the people didn't get it the first time around. I guess it's one of those like, say it again for the people in the back. Say it louder for the people in the back. But Chingy... Is going to be on an upcoming episode of Unsung on TV One. And in the newly released promo, oh, oh, it's called The Chicken Head. Thanks, Joy. Yeah, that's okay. I don't know. Dancing ain't my ministry. But anyway, he's going to be on an upcoming episode of Unsung. And in the newly released teaser clip, they show Chingy talking about how Sydney Starr derailed his career. And I always knew that Chingy took a L with that whole situation, but I didn't really realize until watching this clip. And I guess now that I'm older and more mature and actually care a little bit about people a little more than I used to, it was really heartbreaking to see what went down with that. And for those of you who do not remember, I believe it was like around 2009, Chingy snapped a photo with a fan, but that particular fan was one Miss Sydney Starr. Sydney Starr was at the time labeled a transgender model. And they took a picture and the, to me, to me, the picture looks innocent. It looks like the type of photo that you take with a fan. I got a photo similar to the same posing and staging of Sydney Starr and Chingy in their photo with um, Russell Hornsby who plays Charles fin Charles Flannery in BMF. Come on, I need my mouth to work with me tonight. I have a picture similar to that. I don't expect anybody to look at that picture and be like, oh, they hugged up. Like I saw somebody was like, mm, well, this is what he get for taking an intimate picture with her. Intimate picture? <laughs> have y'all seen the type of photos that Chris Brown takes at his meet and greets with his fans? Now, that's what I would call intimate or probably a little inappropriate, depending on where you fall in your moral compass. But Chinky takes this picture with Sydney Starr. And it didn't take long before the streets start buzzing like, mm, oh. this girl may be different from the rest of the girls, Chingy. I don't know if you noticed 
while snapping pictures with fans and signing autographs. But this girl is a little bit different from the other girls, Chingy. It came out that she was transgender, which really wouldn't have been a big deal today. But in 2009, when a lot of us were still Millie rocking on every block in homophobia, it might be a little problem for Chingy. All right, so the photo wasn't really the issue to me because it would have been like, okay, I took a picture with a fan. I'm like, I'm not asking people, can I see your birth certificate? Can I see your driver's license? Can I get a DNA test? Can I check your Adam's apple just to take a photo? That's ridiculous. If you are a star, a fan wants to take a photo with you, then you take a picture with your fan and you keep it pushing. But where the shiznit hit the fan was when Sydney Starr was like, oh, I'm getting attention from this. And then she went out and got on public platforms like radio stations because podcasts wasn't really hot back then. But if it was 2024, she would have been on a podcast. But she went on a radio station and basically said, you know, we've been doing a little something, something off and on. And then she was asked if they had a sexual relationship. And she was like, yeah. <laughs> Why you do that man like that? Now, I'm going to be 100% transparent, and I believed her when she said it. I don't know why I believed her, but I believed her. I was like, well, what she got to lie for? Like, to be that bold and brazen, to say that you've been dealing with someone off and on, and to say that y'all have had relations? That y'all have been bumping nether regions? That's a bold statement to make as far as a lie is concerned on a public platform dealing with a celebrity. So I was like, oh, well, maybe he did. Because y'all remember the situation where Bobby Valentino was running out of that hotel room. And, you know, and his publicist reached out to me and I wrote a whole story uh, based off of their version of events of what happened that night. And Bobby Valentino, he basically, his version of the story is he got catfished. And once he realized, you know, what type of, that he was playing the crying game. Some of you may be old enough to remember the crying game. Once Bobby Valentino realized he was in, in, a, in an episode of the crying game, he grabbed his belongings and he ran out of the hotel room. And of course, the, the woman who tricked him into coming to the hotel room, she started videotaping him. She uploaded it to social media in an effort to embarrass him. And his stance was, well, y'all laughing at me for grabbing my stuff and running out the room. What did y'all want me to do? Just turn around and beat her up so it could be a hate crime. So it's like, you know, I guess the bigger issue at hand, even with the Bobby Valentino situation, even with the Chingy situation is like, you know, everyone has the right to live their life the way that they want to live their life. But you also have to respect the boundaries of others who choose to live their life differently. Sydney Starr put out this whole story about her and Chingy having an off and on relationship and sleeping together so that she could gain clout. She's one of the OG clout chasers in the LGBTQ community. Chingy, I did not realize that Chingy lost a record deal with Interscope because of this, because of all the negative press that he was receiving, all the attention, all the blog posts and all the, the fanfare and all the, the, the radio shows laughing at him and everybody making just basically made him a big joke and questioning his sexuality. He, not, he lost brand deals. He lost a lot. Only for Sydney Starr to, I guess, the Lord tapped her conscience and she decided to come out later and cry and talk about how she lied. And she's so sorry. Now, old Zavi, 2000, 2009, 2010, 2011 Zavi, I felt like Chingy paid her off to change her story. Because that's where I was mentally at the time. I just didn't have a lot of faith in people to be telling the truth because I was like, why would she be so brazen and then turn around and all of a sudden say she, li she lied? I was like, mm, she must have got a check. The check must have cleared. Whoever wrote Christian Key's check must have wrote her the same check. Allegedly. But um, she said she lied. 
all right, so now everybody's like, oh, she lied, but the damage was already done. Interscope didn't circle back around and give Chingy that record deal. Those brand deals didn't come back around. Chingy's reputation didn't automatically, you know, heal itself like Wolverine and come back at 100%. Chingy took a major, major hit. He said that it li literally took him n over 10 years to try to put the pieces of his reputation, his career back together to the point where people stopped taking him as a joke when he came out and about. That is wild. I would have had all the hottest lawsuits with Sydney stars new name her dead name her biological name her mama name her play cousin name her godbrother name shonda little brother name everybody name would have been listed as defendants on that defamation lawsuit i'd have ate her up in court i would have chewed her up i would have had her for dinner and that's another thing kind of like when it comes to lawsuits you know you hear people all the time holler i'm gonna sue i'm gonna sue i'm gonna sue where the lawsuit at chinky never you know, pump fake, taking legal action against Sydney Starr, but his people dropped the ball on that. She should still be in court over what she did to Chingy. She should never have peace. And the thing is, even to this day, she still has not learned her lesson. I still watch Sydney Starr pull stunts and shows on social media for attention. You remember when she popped out with the photos with Eddie Winslow, Darius McCrary? She's still doing stunts and shows. Then it had everybody wondering if she was in a relationship with Darius. But see, Darius is a different type of N-word because Darius, <laughs> he like it. So he played right along because Darius like attention too, boo-boo. So Darius played right along. The only time Darius don't want attention is when y'all talk about that child support he ain't pay. But other than that, Darius want the attention. So he feeds into it. He call her his boo, his baby, all that. But they sat up and they did this whole little fake booed up press shoot, photos, everything to have all of us. Oh, OK. But she's she hasn't learned her lesson. And then Tiffany Haddish didn't help Chingy none when she came out telling everybody how she almost slept with Chingy. I'm like, child, OK. All right. OK. So I say all of that to say, tune in this Sunday night on TV One. I forgot the time. Let me pull the time so I can be um, accurate and giving you guys all the information that you need. But um, it comes on this Sunday night at 9 p.m. 8 central on TV One. You can watch Chingy's Unsung and hear his whole story from everything, from everything he went through with Sydney Starr to his whole career. And he is truly, if they're going to have somebody do unsung, it needs to be Chingy. It definitely needs to be Chingy because he, he, he gave us some tunes. Chingy gave us some tunes. So, and he's still, he's still keeping himself up and he still looks great. So all that time he had to go sit down and try to figure out what to do with his career. He was taking care of himself because he looks great. He looked really good. Really, really good. So shout out to Chingy. All right. Um, I have a question. Who gonna tell G Depp to stay away from Diddy? Who gonna tell Brother Travell? G Depp was released from prison, I think April 2nd, to be ex I hope I'm right. I believe it was April 2nd. After serving 13 years in prison after he confessed to killing a man during a robbery. First of all, welcome home, G-Dep. You looking good, brother. G-Dep always, G-Dep always been like, he, he was cute, but now he got that grown man, you know what I'm saying? Allah kept me strong, you know what I'm saying? Like he just, he looked good. He got his grown man weight on him. He got the beard going on. He done filled out because, you know, he was a skinny little Harlem shaking a little something, something before he went to jail. But I don't, un I do and I don't. I don't understand why in the year of our Lord 2024, would he be interested in reconnecting with one Sean P. Diddy, Diddy, Daddy, Love, Love, Brother, Puffy, 
Combs Homeland Security. I don't know why he would be interested in reconnecting with him. Now, I definitely understand the desire to create music. Again, another amazing talent whose career was just snatched. It just felt like g Depp was like, special delivery. I want that. And the, okay, come on. You're going to get that. Go sit down in jail. And I definitely, definitely understand him wanting to get back out here and, and his passion for music and wanting to make music. He said he wrote over 400 songs in jail. I mean, 13 years, 365 days, time for 13. Yeah, that's a lot of time to write songs. He says he has over 400 songs. But he also said that Diddy never came to visit him while he was in jail, which I'm not going to hold that against people because I'm not a jail person. I'm not coming up there and putting my hand on the glass and talking to you on this phone who I don't know who mouth been on here. I'm not doing that. I might write you a little kite. Ain't that what, ain't that what y'all call it? I might write y'all a little kite, but more than likely, the most I can give you is like them little, um, little FaceTime calls, but I'm only going to do like one a quarter because that junk is expensive. I ain't got time to be sitting up paying out a whole bunch of money to be sitting on a FaceTime call with the jails. And most of the time I can't have, see, it, you get the point. So he said, did he never visited him? Um, did he drop him from the label? You know, it wasn't like a, oh man, like you, you went through this, you committed this crime, you know, you was kind of spiraling at the time you went through drug and alcohol addiction. You, you, your conscience finally got the best of you. You went down to the police station, you confessed to this particular crime. And I also learned that when G Depp went down to the police station to confess that he had robbed a man, he knew he shot the man, but he did not know if that man had survived. He found out he was a murderer in real time. Like once he got down there where it wasn't kind of like a, can I go home and think about this and come back tomorrow? No, it's too late now. This gentleman has passed. He has gone to the upper room thanks to you. So now we're going to have to put you on the upper cell block for a lifetime. But he got pardoned. And while he was in jail, G. Depp did. He got, I think he got a degree while he was in jail. He, he created a bunch of different programs in jail with the other inmates to help rehabilitate the other inmates to, to, help them learn to therapy all all he did his saints work in prison and i think that's one of the reasons why he ended up you know getting the uh his sentence commuted but for him to have a desire to go work with diddy again may not be the smartest decision fresh out of jail and my spidey senses are telling me that music is the last thing on diddy's mind right now and um g Depp is aware he is aware that diddy got some things going on some things but apparently g Depp doesn't believe there's truth to it because he told diddy to hold his head up he told us to um give people the benefit of the doubt I'm going to give Cassie the benefit of the doubt. Um, he, he just looked like a brother who want to make music real, real, real bad. And I'm pretty sure there are some other great gifted and talented producers who can work with G-Dep to give him some music. But y'all, I need somebody that's within his vicinity to tell him this ain't it. Because Boo Boo, you going to go over there with Diddy and you going to end up back in jail messing around with homeland security please stay 500 to 1000 yards away from that man and you you just got home your family happy to have you back baby and trust me don't women in um up there in harlem and wherever you from they happy to have you back too baby <laughs> i know there is no shortage of kitty cat for g Depp right now he <laughs> and that thing like special delivery <laughs> yeah he all up in that Yes, God. So, yeah. G Depp, just don't do it. Don't. You're, you have, yeah. Faye said, work with 50 Cent. You got a better chance of going over there, over there to G G G G unit. See what you, you might get a role in uh, BMF. Everybody else in it. 
Go on over there and holler at 50 Cent because he feeling petty and he'll put you on just for spite. That would have been my first phone call. Because at this point, I, you don't owe Diddy nothing because I'm pretty sure he still got your publishing. Just saying. Let me look at my notes and see what else I want to talk about. What y'all want to talk about? Let me know what you want to talk about. Um, Jaguar Wright. Do y'all believe the stuff Jaguar Wright be saying in these interviews? Because there was a point in time where I was like, oh, she spilled. <laughs> oh, tell me more, Miss Wright. She's spilling tea. But at this point in the game, her tea feel like it's laced with Hennessy. Like a hottie toddy. My friend told me this today, and, and I think she said it eloquently. She said, when Jaguar Wright speaks to us, she ain't 100% truth, but she ain't 100% lying. Right there in the middle. That sweet spot. That's where Jag Jag at. Let me see what y'all say. Let's see. Oh, Joy said, hell no, to the no, no, no. And Lyrical said, Jack, true to it, yeah. Charlotte said, uh, Hennessy tea is the best. Now, see, that's what we encouraging people to drink. Um, So today, I came across a clip that has gone viral of Jaguar Wright talking about her time dating Cat Williams. Now, I have been to all of the Jaguar Wright story times, so I thought, but I surely missed this Cat Williams story time. This is all new information to me today. I did not know Jaguar Wright was dating Cat Williams. I didn't know back when it happened and I didn't know today in the year of our Lord, 2024. I had no idea, none, not nine months. Let me tell you something. Jaguar Wright done had some of the best of them. You let her tell it now. But I had no idea that she had dated Cat Williams for nine months. So according to Jaguar, Cat Williams was her 30th birthday present. Wait, what was she called? Hold on. Let me make sure I say it right. Was he the present or the 30th birthday gift? Yeah, 30th birthday present is what she said Cat Williams was. She says she had a birthday celebration, her and her friends. They was having a good little time and Cat pulled up. And Cat Williams gave her 20 bands. And for the people who not hit, that's $20,000. 20 bands. Gave her 20 bands. And he said to her that this was a down payment for your time. Let me tell you something. Pimping been pimping since pimping. 20 bands, a down payment for my time? I ain't never have nobody put a down payment on my time. Now, I done had plenty of N-words waste my time with no refund, reclaiming my time, reclaiming my time. But I ain't never got a down payment on my time. Jaguar right? salute to you, girl. Because your time, time is valuable. That's the one thing that we all have to realize. Time is valuable. Our time on this earth is valuable. Our time, if, if you tell me to pick you up in 10 minutes, you best be ready in 10 minutes because my time is valuable. I ain't never, any of y'all ever have somebody put a down payment on your time? And now the down payment may not have been monetary. I'm just saying. But have you ever had someone put a down payment on your time? Down payment on your time might have been a really, really nice dinner, some a bouquet of roses, maybe a nice gift, you know, some little bling bling on the finger, the neck, and you know, the earrings, the neck. Have you ever had someone put some down payment on your time? Joy said, nope. <laughs> I ain't never. I'm about to go downstairs and ask my husband why he ain't put no down payment on my time. Because I'm feeling away. But anyway, so Jaguar said that the Jaguar that we have now is a result of Cat Williams teaching her how to be the Jaguar right that she is today. And that is a truth teller. 
A cap slayer. You out here capping, she slays you. They pretty much cut from the same cloth. She says she learned so much from Cat Williams in the nine months that they were together. I said nine months? That was long enough for y'all to have some cheering. I had no idea. I knew Jaguar. I knew about Jaguar and Talib and Jaguar and Common and all that. Other. I had no idea that she was with Cat Williams for nine months. Now, Charlotte's starting some mess. Charlotte said that Jaguar Wright needs to go on Club Shay Shay and we do not need. Sh no, Shannon Sharp is not equipped to deal with Jaguar Wright. He would just come on, Jaguar, all night. Oh, I need to sip something. I can't believe. Oh, no. Come on, Jaguar. Now, why you say that now, Jaguar? Now, Jaguar, you say that about Cat. Uh-uh, Jaguar. No, 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 no. You, nah, you ain't telling the truth, Jaguar. Come on, Jaguar. No, we not putting Shannon Sharp through that. Jaguar ended up cussing that man out. Now, it might make for good. If you want to get them ratings back up again. But I'm just saying, nah, don't, don't, no, 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 no club Shay Shay. But what I did find interesting was Jaguar in between smacking on the food that she was eating in the middle of the interview, <laughs> which sent me like, I almost dialed 911 to report a crime. I can't stand when people chew with their mouth open. And the reason being is I was taught really, really quick when I was young not to chew with my mouth open because every time I did it, a hand eventually smacked me in my mouth. Just saying. So, you know, when people chew with their mouth open, it's triggering for me. But anyway, in that nine months, she said that um, once the Illuminati set their sights on Cat, she had to go. The Illuminati. Now, was this the same Illuminati that had him and Ludacris in the room together at the same time to decide who was going to be the next star of Fast and Furious? I don't know. But she said when the Illuminati set their sights on Cat, apparently something was said or done that went down that spooked him because she said when she would get in the bed with him at night, the brother would have on a bulletproof vest. She said in a direct quote, when I got in the bed, he had Kevlar on. I learned a new word today, people. Kevlar. Let me tell you guys what Kevlar is. Kevlar is a type of aramid fiber. I don't even if I don't know if I pronounced that word correctly, but I'm gonna say aramid fiber, used in body armor and bulletproof vests. Cat Williams was sleeping in a bulletproof vest and or body armor at night when Jaguar Wright got in the bed with him. According to Jaguar Wright. I don't even want to imagine a life or a situation where I feel like I have to sleep in a bulletproof vest. Story time or not, I don't want that kind of life. But with that being said, on a brighter night, on a brighter note, Netflix has announced Cat Williams' next stand-up called Woke Folk will premiere on May 4th. It will be a live event on Netflix. And of course, I will be sure to keep you posted and remind you of when it's going to come out. But I thought that was interesting. Let's see what else on my list. Is Gail King a op? Like, is she the ops? Because I'm not so sure. I'm going to tell you the first time I felt like Gail King was an op. When her and Oprah came out and got mad and said, don't be calling us auntie. That was the first time I felt like Gail King was an op. Because in the black community, calling a woman, a black woman, 
of stature or age. Auntie, to me, is a sign of love, respect, and reverence. So if you say, don't be calling me auntie, that says to me, I don't, I don't want whatever kind of love y'all got. I don't want it. No, thanks. Thanks, but no thanks. Because Oprah don't want us to call her auntie, but she's okay going to another country or bringing people from other countries and allowing them to call her mama, auntie, whatever it is they want to call her. Mama O. I think it was Mama O they call her. That's okay. But y'all little nigglets around here, stop calling me auntie. I ain't y'all auntie. Y'all didn't not y'all not in my tax bracket to be calling me no damn auntie. I wonder if Taraji can call Oprah auntie. Hmm. I'm sure Fantasia can. And Danielle Brooks can, but can Taraji call Oprah auntie? Hmm. I don't know. All right, but anyway, is Gail King a op? So we had the situation when Kobe passed away. Um, just want to take a moment to send love and prayers to Vanessa because her and Kobe's anniversary recently passed. When Kobe passed, Gail King sat down with Lisa Leslie, who was like this with Kobe's. And she kept, I guess Lisa Leslie thought this interview was going to be about remembering my dear friend who was called home way too soon. But it turned into Gail King constantly asking her about Kobe's rape case. And some of you rape may remember Snoop Dogg cussed Gail King the book out in the streets of social media. Even Boosie. Come on, Gail King. What is this about? You know, Boosie taught like, if there is a Uncle Ruckus, it's Boosie. Boosie told her off. Snoop Dogg just cussed her out, cussed her down to the ground to the point where he felt bad. I think his mama called him and he went back and apologized. Gail later tried to explain why she said that and why she said this, that, and the third. We was like, all right, Gail. So we got cool on Gail for a minute, but eventually we let her sashay her way back at, you know, at the barbecue. You could sit all the way back there, you and Oprah, sit back in the non-auntie section. But all the aunties, we gonna sit up here close to the grill and stuff so we could be smelling like charcoal and we could be close to the cooler so we can get our drinks. You know what I'm saying? And then when we get ready to do the electric slide, we can already be like this. And then when you get hungry, you could just run over to your plate real quick and get a bite of your ribs and then jump back in the electric slide real fast. I painted the picture. Um, so we got past that. She was open. We let her back a little bit. And then, and y'all, this slipped past my radar because I've been in a sunken place for like the past two weeks, but that's not even what we're here to talk about today. But this slipped past my radar, but I caught it because of Steven Jackson. Shout out the stack. Okay. Gail King interviewed Dawn Stally. The Dawn Stally. Diddy Dawn Dawn, Diddy Diddy Dawn Dawn to the break of dawn. Dawn Stally. The Queen OG. If the... If the South Carolina Gamecocks was Voltron, Dawn would be like, and I'll form the head. Some of y'all old enough to remember that. That girl. When you look up who's that girl, it's Dawn right here. And shout out to her and the Gamecocks. Gail King had the pleasure of sitting down and interviewing this queen. She talked about the incredible undefeated season of the South Carolina Gamecocks. Undefeated. And as she was talking to Dawn, because I had to rewind it a few times because I was like, you know, sometimes my hair and be acting up. You know what I'm saying? I'll be having to tap it a little bit. She told Dawn in her face, 
yeah, you know, you guys, were you ever worried? Because, you know, we were all rooting for Iowa and, and Caitlin Clark. We was doing what? She told Dawn, the woman who won the 2024 NCAA tournament, the women's tournament, the champions, because at a certain point, you got to start pronouncing all the syllables. The champions. She told Dawn Staley, because we were all rooting for Iowa and Caitlin Clark. Who is we? For my Latino brothers and sisters, nosotros? Who is nosotros? Que es nosotros? Gail, who's we? You and the other non-auntie, who is we? Are you, are you serious right now? Even if you felt that way, why TF would you say that to Dawn's face? And when I tell you Dawn is a gracious queen and child of God, because I would have said, girl, <laughs> the fuck? And I would have left. I would have got up and left. Or I would have started acting like Glorilla and James Brown in interviews. Living in America. I just would have, I would have crashed out the rest of the interview but dawn is a respectable queen who crown never shifts and the lord keeps her on her pivot all the time because i would have let gail king have it real bad in a real sweet sweet cute way that she would have been so embarrassed let me tell you how embarrassed gail king is though because when i wrote that blog post i was like i need to go see the official video from cbs mornings do you know cbs mornings did not post that video they know better gail sat in somebody's office after that interview somebody talked to her somebody had a powwow with her after that interview because cbs mornings did not release that official video you told this black queen that you was rooting for iowa and caitlin clark you told an undefeated queen thank god for stephen jackson because stephen told her exactly what i felt like needed to be said now he didn't go Actually, in this particular case, I want to swap Steven out and bring back the Snoop Dogg that originally cussed Gail out. I feel like that's the level of cuss cuss that she needed at this point. Ma'am, are you an op? Do you want us to pull over and just let you get out the car because you ain't riding with us no more? You ain't down with like four flat tires with us no more? Like what's going on? And you can root for whoever you want. I'm not saying that. You can root for whoever you want. She might have grew up in Iowa. Caitlin might be one of her goddaughters that's going to go to Oprah school. Or she probably made a donation to Oprah. I don't know. Peace and Chavez to you. But why would you say that to Dawn? Like, but my grandma said, when something on your heart, eventually it's going to pop out. It's going to pop out. So my question to all of you, is Gail King a op? She don't want us to call her auntie. She wanted to talk about Kobe's rape case when, when Vanessa is at home mourning not only the loss of the love of her life but her daughter, but you wanted to talk about his rape case. And now you told Dawn Stally that you was rooting for the other team. Nadia said the biggest op, not just a regular op. She is super size op. Chow. Mm. Rita said, absolutely. Charlotte says she worse than an op. Well, I guess, you know, there's, there's some people that are in my community, but they're not a part of my community. Does that make sense to anybody? Come on, Gail. Gail need to go on Club Shay Shay so Shannon Sharp could keep saying, come on, Gail, now what, now what, now, 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 why would you say that to Dawn, Gail? Like, like, now, 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 really, what, now, Gail, what would make you say that? Come on, Gail, take some of my cognac. But Shannon may not be a part of Gail's community either. 
What else I got on my notes? about some mm, I don't want to say that word on the thing let's talk about Brian McKnight for a second Brian McKnight you know as a parent sometimes your relationship with your kids can get complicated sometimes it's a simple complicated like child go to your room and leave me alone sometimes it's a complicated like you know what? I don't know if you like me and I don't know if I like you. I don't know. But I stand on 10 toes with everything that I firmly believe in. No matter how mad, no matter how bad it gets with my youngins, I will never get to a place or space in my life where I act like they don't even exist. Now, I might need a timeout from them Negroes from time to time. Everybody need a little timeout. But to act as if they don't exist, to create a brand new family and refer to them as if every child that you have, have had your DNA inserted into some woman's body to create no longer exists. Get on social media talking about your stepdaughter, talking about thank you for making me a girl dad. A shout out to my one and only daughter. Brian, do you know you, you keep this up? You're going to end up in the hottest, hottest VIP suite in hell. Like at this point, I've heard things about you prior to all this kid business, like just about what type of human being you are. It was like, hey, don't let the tunes and the piano and the don't let all that fool you. I've heard things, but I heard things about me that aren't true. So I typically don't run with what I heard about somebody. But then when you start lining up and and checking off the boxes then i mean what else am i to believe i mean i done heard everything well i ain't gonna go into detail on what i heard because uh i won't survive another lawsuit i promise you that um so most recently i mean we've already watched brian mcknight publicly disown his kids in 3d okay we watched him do it in 4k depending on where you was at but this week, he's now doing a segment on social media where he's answering your questions. So if you got a question for Brian McKnight, go on over to his Instagram account and drop down in the comments and you may be the lucky commenter who gets his attention this week. So what he does is he grabs a comment, he puts it up, and then he addresses it head on. So someone made mention of, you know, he gushes about his family, his family, his family. Brian McKnight, that I don't know what type of roots that woman put on him. But he loved that lady, dirty draws. And, I, and there's nothing wrong with loving the just mm, every morsel of your spouse. But it's, it's something about the way that Brian McKnight is loving this lady makes me feel like she going to have to die her way out of that relationship. like die her way out of that relationship some of y'all know y'all can see where i'm going on my gps it's, it feels unhealthy or it feels performative it may be performative to spite the previous women that he's been with anywho so as he's talking about his family someone commented you know you always talk about these other kids and you always Go out of your way to act like the other ones, you know, your biological children don't exist. And Brian went on this diatribe about how you have to let go of negative people and you have to get negative people out of your life. And it doesn't even matter if they're related to you and, you know, evil. Oh, evil. Excuse me. Keyword evil and negative people. And you have to get them out of your life. And it doesn't matter if they're related to you. OK, Brian, we we, we get where you going. We can smell what you cooking. So now your kids are evil and negative. Okay. Then in the comments, someone dropped a scripture on Brian McKnight. I can't remember the scripture per se, 
But someone dropped a scripture on Brian McKnight basically about the way that he treats his kids, X, Y, Z, so on and so forth. And Brian McKnight responded by saying that his biological children were a product of sin and he didn't raise them, their mothers did. So he's basically saying that his children are evil, products of sin that he had to separate himself from, but he's not taking any responsibility for the adults that they grew up to be because they mamas raised them. Brian McKnight, I don't know if your mama is down here or if she has gone on the glory, but wherever she is, I know she is embarrassed. Embarrassed. And it just baffles me how men just take the liberty of deciding they don't want their kids no more. Mm, not feeling it today. Not going to be a dad anymore. The way my King Jesus is set up, because see, Jesus loves unconditionally. But some of the things that I have ex ex experienced in my life has also shown me that my King Jesus is petty. Respectfully, Lord. Don't be surprised if a few years from now, Brian McKnight ends up in a situation where he needs a blood transfusion or a kidney or something of that nature that only one of them three youngins can give him. You know, the ones that are evil and negative and the ones that don't matter no more. Them. He's going to end up in something, something where one of them three youngins that he so happily moonwalked away from are going to be the ones that could save his ass. So this is just my and your weekly reminder that Brian Midnight ain't shit. In case you forgot. Now when my playlist come up and his little tunes is undeniable, I be like, he sure is. Click up on to the next. Don't want to hear it. You won't get a stream out of me. Nopity nope. Not even a partial stream, not out of me. But y'all watch and see. King Jesus gonna handle this. You watch and see. Now, there was already one situation that I could speak on, but I don't wanna block my blessings. But some of y'all might know because he already got one check on his karma box, but I'm gonna leave that alone. Some of y'all might know what I'm talking about, but I'm not gonna confirm nor deny because I don't want the Lord to block my blessings. At least the three that I got left over here in the corner, I don't want him to block them. They within arm's reach. I don't want him to block them. But God, listen, my God don't like ugly and he ain't too fond of cute. Just saying. All right, let's see what else. I think that might be all that I have for y'all. Unless there's something else that y'all want to talk about before I get into this story time about why Ashanti blocked me. Y'all got something else y'all want to talk about or y'all ready for story time? Let me know. I'm looking in the comments. I see all my beautiful friends in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all being quiet. Nothing else y'all want to talk about? Okay, story time. So, um, in case you didn't know, Ashanti blocked me. And um, this week, Ashanti finally confirmed, and I use the word finally, but don't take it as, don't don't get deep with it. Like, it's a finally like, hey, she finally said it. Not like I had her on the clock and I was waiting for her to confirm her pregnancy. She has the right to tell us when and whenever she gets ready. Y'all saw how Halle Bailey did it. Halle Bailey said it was like, I ain't pregnant. Here got my baby. Now let me show y'all all my maternity pictures. But anyway, so this week, Ashanti uh, confirmed that not only is she pregnant with her first child, but she and Nellie are also engaged. So I know a lot of you are happy because when the pregnancy speculation first began, all of you was like, oh, not another baby mama, another unwed household, another child coming into a, a broken home or whatever it is that you guys say when people get pregnant out of wedlock. So she came with the double whammy. Yeah, I'm pregnant, but I'm engaged too. Don't start. Don't start. We getting married. Don't start. 
don't start. So first, I would like to say shout out in to Nelly and Ashanti for being proof that second time around really works in some cases. Um, but when she got pregnant and I went to go get the pregnancy content to put on the site, I was reminded that Ashanti has me blocked on social media. This reminder came a little bit mm, a week or two after. <laughs> I was blocked by Raising Cane and Star London Brown. So when I told you all, I, I just made a kind request to the ICC friends. Hey, can y'all let Ashanti know I said congratulations because she has me blocked. Some of y'all began to point the finger at me like I was the problem. Friend, what did you do? What did you say to her, friend? What you done did now, friend? I want y'all to know I'm innocent. In most cases, I am innocent. In a lot of cases, it's my job that gets me blocked, not anything that I had personally said or done. The reason why Ashanti has blocked me on social media is because some of you may have been rocking with me. And even if you weren't, you may have been rocking around the block to remember a time when Ashanti did a concert. I believe the concert was at a college of some sort, some type of little mini tour, you know, just to keep the, oh baby, oh baby, you know, just to kind of keep the checks coming in, right? And the concert had to be canceled because I believe it was like only 20 tickets sold. And I wrote a blog post about it. I wasn't the only one. Every single media outlet wrote a blog post about it, but I got blocked. Why you mad at me and you not mad at all of them? All of them. And you know, y'all know how I do. Even if you done did something super stupid, I at least try to offer some type of grace somewhere along the line. I was like, you know, maybe people didn't know where to buy the tickets. Maybe... Maybe the uh, ticket master have, had malfunctioned. <laughs> they, I know them people wanted to come out and get, oh, baby, oh, baby. I know they wanted to come out and get some of that. But only, I mean, maybe the first 20 people got their tickets and then the, the system malfunctioned. But all I did was write the blog post. I didn't dog her. I didn't clown her. I didn't make fun of her. I'm getting these jokes off the night. But I didn't say none of that to her. I'm always respectful. Even when I make my little jokey jokes, it ain't nothing that'll make you want to fight me when you see me on the block. It's just jokes. When y'all read my blog post, I want y'all to have something that y'all can come back and key key like, oh, you wild for saying that. <laughs> like, but now wow wow like i ain't the op like gail king i just insert a little personality but she blocked me she ain't give me like a courtesy warning like a hey you got one more time you oh you tried it but what really really gets me is how i can write the same content as another outlet and I will see, I get blocked, but they'll be in the comments of the other outlet. Like, <laughs> y'all so crazy. Because <laughs> you know, the girls always do this with their weaves. <laughs> they always like be stroking it, doing like this and stuff with their weaves. And y'all be in the comments, kiki in with them, but y'all block me. I guess because I'm a non-look factor. <laughs> but listen, blocked or not, I still can write these posts. I I don't know if you know, but I can, but I can. So that is why Ashanti blocked me. So again, I say to all of you, especially those of you who was doubting me and thought I was cutting up. Y'all don't see this halo. I don't, I don't bother people. But since we here in a story time, let me tell you about some other people who got me blocked. <laughs> Malik Yoba blocked me. 
And I really, really, really like Malik Yoba. Malik Yoba used to be an ICC friend. Malik Yoba used to engage our content, kick it in the comments, everything. And then he told everybody that he was dating a transgender lady. And I was like, oh my gosh. And here's the wild part. I wrote the post not even realizing she was transgender. I was like, Malik Yoba got a boo. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Nia undercover. I didn't know it was really undercover. I didn't know it was an undercover situation. I did not know she was trans. I was just like, Malik Yoba found love. What's up? And I wrote the blog post and was still respectful because I love the LGBTQIA community. Depending on how many drinks I got in me, I might come in. I might join y'all for a little bit. But what I'm saying is, he blocked me. He's still kicking it with everybody else who wrote the same article. Why me? Why me? Again, maybe I'm just a non fun factor. Um, Who else got me blocked? Kelly Price got me blocked, but I earned that one. Okay, I'm going to own up. I'm going to own up. Let me take a sip of tea. Mm -hmm. I earned that one. I did. Kelly Price blocked me. And let me tell y'all something. I used to love, 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 love me some Kelly Price. But I love musical Kelly Price. I didn't love Kelly Price who went missing. <laughs> I love musical Kelly Price. Not the one who went missing during COVID and then came back and talk, talking to us like we we need to mind our MF business. Not that Kelly. But I earned that one. I will be fair and I earned that one. I'm not apologizing like J. Cole, but I'm taking accountability. I earned that one because it was during the time she was on R&B Divas. And if you watch that show, you know why I got blocked. Because that's when I was on Twitter heavy. And one particular episode, I believe it was the one when she pulled up and took out the Timberland boots and start putting on the Timberland boots, lacing them up, knowing she ain't got no stamina. Kelly. Yeah. So um, I earned that one. Because I not only did I get on Twitter and drag Kelly, I at remember back in the day when they used to be like at or dat me. I added her. I hit her with the at Kelly Price. Yeah. To let her know what I thought about her. And um she hit me with the with the block. Yeah. Who else got me blocked? Y'all know London Brown got me blocked. Kelly Price got me blocked. Malik Yoba got me blocked. Ashanti got me blocked. Who else got me blocked? I'm trying to think. Because you know what's wild? It's people who had me blocked and I don't realize they had me blocked until I try to go to their page for something. So I'm sure, I don't know why, but I feel like in my spirit, at least by now, Ja Rule should have me blocked. He should have me blocked. Not that I bother that man or I mess with him, but when 50 get petty, I'm usually on top of it. So I don't know. But I told y'all my Ja Rule story when I met him years ago. Sweetest, sweetest guy. I don't know if the Ja Rule we got in 2024 is the Ja Rule that I met way in the backpack. But when I met Ja Rule, when I met Jeffrey, I met Jeffrey. That was before he tricked y'all into going over to that fire fest. But I, I, yeah, I met Jeffrey and Jeffrey was a very, very kind and awesome human being. Yeah. Yeah, that one. All right, y'all. I guess that's it for tonight. Unless it's something else y'all want to talk about. I'm going to look down in the comments and see. Uh, let me go through some of the comments. <laughs> Let's see. 
Oh, Charlotte said they reported Mandisa passed away today and she thought it was Kelly Price. Girl, I'm taking that back off. After we're not going to do that. Um, Sonia said Kelly Price seems like a mean girl. If you need any confirmation, watch R&B Diva. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Nadia said, you mean fire rule? Yeah, fire rule. But yeah. So, um... Yeah, I'm going to get a new internet connection tomorrow, so I'm excited about that. Not that you all care, but my internet will be a little faster. Maybe I can get a little more productivity going on in these internet streets. But just thank you all, as always, for tuning in, hanging out with me for this hour on your Friday night. Because like I said, time is valuable. And y'all didn't. none of y'all put a down payment on my time. And I still showed up. That's really going to sit on my spirit for a minute like a $20,000 down payment. Like, first of all, I already knew Kat was a smooth little fella when he said he keeps satin pillowcases at his house so when the ladies lay down, they don't damage their hair. And I said, damn. Because Peter Gunn's will have you sleeping on an air mattress on the floor. Some of y'all might remember that. But yeah. But I just never had nobody just put a down payment on my time. Hmm. Yeah, let me go downstairs and ask my husband why he put, never put a down payment on my time. I'm going to see what he say. But I love y'all. And I hope the Lord continues to keep you and bless all of you until we get back here uh, next Friday night, Lord willing. But in the meantime, I will see you in the streets of the internet, preferably icecreamconvos.com where we serve delicious scoops of entertainment and celebrity news but y'all know during the day i kiki with y'all all up and down the streets of facebook and um if anybody sees mark zuckerberg tell him i said the kiss mm, never mind never mind that's not a good way to end the show all i'm gonna say is facebook has been gaslighting the the heck out of me for the past three weeks it's a long story i'm not gonna get into it tonight but i really feel like just packing up my little ice cream combo shit and leaving but the only reason why i ain't because of y'all but the minute y'all say girl i'm ready i'll go where you go we out the minute i know if i step y'all gonna step with me like we kendrick lamar and the big steppers i'm out because they have been gaslighting the hell out of me for three weeks. I just need one simple fix. It's a big fix, but it's a simple fix. But anyway. All right. Love y'all. Have a good night. See you next week.